but man, you gotta you gotta give the boxing public. Yeah. A break. <laughs> Adrian, let me get back to you, man. Bill Haney done right, walk, he done popped up on, and this is why we needed a fucking studio, Bill, man. Yes, come sit down with me, man. Yes, sir, yes, oh my God, you are the best, man. I swear to God, they can't never talk shit about Bill Haney. Hey, go, hey, ahead, hey, hey. go ahead and put on your headphones, hey. man. Oh man, ain't this the? This is great. Now this is I'm a, I'm a, it's gonna be it's gonna hard it's gonna get hard to get used to this just having guys pop up. Th- that was an amazing feeling. Thank you so much for joining us. I didn't expect you to be here. Uh, Yo, he surprised us, ladies and gentlemen. We're joined obviously by Bill Haney, father trainer of Devin Haney. What's going on, man? Hey, King man, blessings to be back. Blessings, uh, blessings to you, and happy New Year. I ain't talked to you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to learn some life lessons uh, before the new year, but uh, it's the way God wanted, man. I, you know, I, I'm a little reckless. I'm a little aggressive, and I got to let the boxers do the boxing and the talkers do the talking, and I'm going to just be talking from now on. But, uh, man, thank you for surprising. This, yo, this kind of got better. <laughs> I'm really happy, man. Thank you. So I was talking about your top ten list, man. It must feel amazing for it to come full circle and like you said your son who was got the knocks people you know tried to say whatever they said about him and now he's one of the only two fighters on that list that actually fought two fighters on that list and he's number three yeah and uh he uh several fighters on the list that had an opportunity to uh, also fight him that we wanted to uh actively pursue the fight but um, we're not going to go down that road. What we will say is that we were blessed to be able to have two fighters that are on the, on the list, on the top ten. One in Jojo Diaz, who I think was on the top five when we fought him. Um, and both of the guys that we fought are still higher than most of the ranked fighters that uh, – that you haven't fought. That we haven't fought. <laughs> Other contemporaries, yeah. So. And, uh, Trav, if you could pull up that list for The Ring Magazine one more time just so the people watching know what we're talking about. And, obviously, uh, some of those people you mentioned is like Orion. Ryan is – well, he's, he's actually above JoJo and Linardis. Right. But when you talk about actually um, – Everyone was questioning who we would fight or who did we fight, mm-hmm. right? They talked about Jorge Linares and his age, and you see that he's still ranked high everywhere uh, on everybody's list. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, of course, styles make fights. You know, I don't want to take anything away from some of the, the good performances that, that Cambosos put on against mm-hmm. uh, Tiafimo. Uh, a Tank, of course, put on a great one against uh, Issa Cruz. Um, but, you know, I mean, if you talk about uh, the year and its total, I think Devin had uh, the most impact in the lightweight division. Wow. Over Cambosos' upset win? You think that was more impactful? Well, I mean, if you listen to what Tiafimo Lopez and the Lopez's are saying in terms of their um, readiness to, be, to, to fight, they don't want to give him the credit that, he, that I think that he deserves. And he beat a uh, prepared T, uh, Tiafimo Lopez – whether or not he was healthy or not, that's that's a whole nother thing. But I know he was prepared for Cambosos. I know Cambosos was pre- prepared for him. It was a great win for Cambosos, but it's not something that we don't think that we would have done in that position either. So now, obviously, Cambosos gets this win. Has there been any sort of conversations? Is he still as interested as he once sounded? Um, you know, I did my due diligence, of course. I try to do as much as I can to make the fights happen. I don't listen to the naysayers or I don't listen to the, the promoter talk in that sense. Uh, I reached out to his dad, mm-hmm. uh, Jim, who, who's, who's a great guy, you know, um, who's doing the best that he can for his son uh, in the position that his son is in. Uh, it's a newfound position that I think that he's exploring a lot of um, avenues, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but rightfully so. Rightfully so. But uh, you know, when when from man to man, father to father, uh, he's given me his word that uh, he's doing everything in his power for the fight to happen with Devin Haney. Uh, he's he 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 uh, dispels any rumors uh, to me that uh, that it's a Lomachenko involved. Uh, he, as far as I know, it's it's Devin and Cambosos, Cambosos and and uh, Devin. Mm. And how much uh, of an option is Australia? 
I know the Omicron is going out there. Everybody's got the sniffles. Is that still on the table, or are you trying to make this a USA event? Of course, when you heard Devin's response to what his willingness to make the undisputed happen, um, he said that he would go to Australia, but he also indicated that he would go to Jupiter. And we know <laughs> we don't know what's on Jupiter, so we know that uh, that you know Devin is willing to make the fight happen by any means necessary. That's amazing. That's that's great, man. I, I hope he gets that opportunity. Um, have you spoken to Lou, though? Because I know you and Lou have a relationship. You were trying to get Comey. At least the, the phone lines were active. Has he gone dark now that he's got the uh, undis, well, unified champion? Thank you for the correction, Ness. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Um, like I say, you know, if, if Lou was at really uh, trying to make the thing happen uh, with with uh, Devin, you know, he could he had an opportunity to negotiate when we had Comey, when he had Comey, and he chose to go with Lomachenko. Mm -hmm. Got got Comey beat, got Comey beat with uh, nothing was on the on the table for him. Right, I felt sorry for Comey because he had an opportunity to be a, a um, world a champion, world champion. Uh, and I, I think it would have been a second time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the promoters do some promoter business, and sometimes it's not in the best interest of the fighter. Unlike you have Cambosos now, Cambosos and his dad are approaching it different. They're on some 2022 shit, mm. right? Cambosos said that he speaks for himself. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Cambosos, he indicates that he's representing his son and not necessarily uh, uh, Lou DiBella business. Mm. We know Lou DiBella, you know, and, and w the way he represents fighters are a thing in the past. It's, uh, you know, time is, times have changed. You have platforms like the Boxing Voice who allow the fighters, the management teams to get out, get in the streets and make these things happen, unlike the promoters of yesteryear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, when considering Australia, is Devin willing to get vaccinated to get into that country? Has that something you guys spoke about? Because I know some other fighters – we're not running to be vaccinated. I think things are slowly changing and more people are open to the vaccination, but what's your stance? And, and do you know your son's stance? Well, I would, I would feel, you know, I would let Devin come on and speak about something that, that's so, uh, you know, um, it's a, a topic that he would have to address, right, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, I know he's, he's doing everything and has said that he will do everything to go uh, to Australia. Um, we... We would look forward to it. Um, we would definitely consider. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I haven't had the vaccine, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can publicly speak about myself. I'll let Devin come on and speak about his, you know, his stance on it. I haven't. Um, it's something that I would have to very much consider, um, and, and talk to my man, talk to uh, you know my, of course my 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 partner, mm -hmm. um, and you know, and then just come up with a with a game plan. Absolutely. Um, considering again Australia, how soon would you want to get up in there uh, to get him acclimated to the time zone? Because that's it's uh, twenty four hours. I think it's nine seven seven p.m. is there nine a.m. Right. It it will it will take. I'm well, not, seven p.m. Eastern. Excuse me. I'm used to the East Coast. You know, as like I said, from a as a team, we will sit down and then decide when is the fight date and uh, when do we need to uh, to get there. But um, as far as that, I, I look forward to it. Uh, I look forward to an opportunity to, to go to Australia with the good people down there, down under, right, and, <laughs> and, and, and put on a performance. Absolutely. A lifetime. Uh, what else, man? What else? So what, what has your son been up to? Actually, you know, my co-host said they bumped into him at a club. Where, were you with him, Madison? I don't know really? what club it was, but he was like, "Yo, we seen Devin." I'm like, "Yeah, I really? missed that." Yeah. So, are you are you full time here in Las Vegas now? I will be. I ha I came to mm -hmm. you know finalize everything and hopefully convince the little lady, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're you know they want me back as early as this month. I'm trying to come back first month of February to start because mm -hmm. we just made the move to Florida, right? You know, so. But, uh, I mean, this is the dream. Look, you actually popping up. This is what she needed to see, right? right? Like, this is the difficulties I have in New Jersey or in Florida that I won't have here. Like, you just popped up, making it all that much better and amazing, man. I and, mean, you know, ironically, I was, I was 
taking my daughter to, to school, school while I while okay. I was listening, right? So that you know works. I mean? so, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean it's perfect. But um, you, the voice, you know, the voice of the people, um, it, it it represents the new way of of watching boxing, oh, a new way of it, marketing man. boxing, right? And uh, and and my ability to come down here and, and put in some work. See, I, I got to pull up. My pull up game is vicious. I see. You, see. you see what I'm saying? So I I I, I love this brother. I love, I this. love you, it too. You're doing a great job. Like I said, I don't know if you were listening. I, I need to get Amari Jones in here. Get me Shamar Canal. Everybody, even Acosta. I know uh, DHP has a few fighters, and uh, we can start with with everyone else other than Devin until we get to Devin. Man, I know he he's busy, but but speaking of him, as the trainer, what month are you targeting for his return, regardless of opponent? Do you have a time frame in your mind, or do you just want to let things work themselves out? Well, we we're, we're thinking April. We've been okay. here in April. We've been here in April. Um, April, you know, May. I don't want. I don't want it to go to where as Devin is out the ring for too too long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But I also want to want to show that we have patience enough with Cambosos and his team, considering the big win that they did just have, right? And uh, and just making this thing happen, bringing the undisputed to the lightweight di- division, mm-hmm. the true undisputed. I don't know if you've seen uh, on Instagram, Tiafimo Lopez said that he would be undisputed again at 140. <laughs> Do you think that he has uh, washed his hands with 135? Did you see what Josh Taylor said? Newsflash. You're he not undisputed. <laughs> he never was. You're undisputed. undisputed right? I know. You know, and, and that's, that's why I said this. When it comes to fights that, that are legacy-defining fights, you take your time. Uh, you you approach him with uh, open mindedness, right? And you just try to make the things happen. We had an opportunity for Lopez and Haney, both families, to get together and make something beautiful happen in the lightweight division. We weren't able to. Um, the Lopez has decided to do something else. Now we have the Cambosos, who 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 are a great. It's a, it's an American story, uh, a good family. That something great has happened for them, and now we would like them to uh, to let's continue on. You know, they continue on uh, their legacy of greatness. And if it's beating Devin Haney, so be it. And also Devin Haney have an opportunity to continue his legacy and beating George Cambosos. So let's go back to, obviously, the Diaz fight. Um, we were in attendance. Uh, it, it was, a, it was a, a unique weekend, obviously, because Devin fought on a Saturday and Tank fought on a Sunday in another state. Um, but what did you think of your son's performance now that obviously you've had some time to rewatch it, I'm sure, and some time to just digest it? Uh, did he do everything you wanted? Were all the boxes checked? Um, well, you know, Devin has an, an array in his toolbox. Um, and as, as, a fighter, as a fighter, you need the kind of competition to bring out the best in you. Jojo Diaz brought out m- uh, more than – his last opponents have brought out and Devin because he, you got a chance to see him fight in the pocket, right? And you and you got a chance to see him um, deal with adversity, deal with the fact that um, JoJo wanted to get him on the ropes, and and Devin didn't let him. Mm-hmm. And and you know and that's that's just more experience for Devin, more experience as as a young fighter. And uh, I'm I'm happy about his performance. What we what we say in our household is on to the next. We're not spending a bunch of time, um, you know, re-preparing for JoJo Diaz because we know styles make fights. Uh, we know that JoJo Diaz is a different style than the George Cambosos, as well as the George Cambosos is a different style than the Lomachenko, and the Lomachenko is different than the Tank Davis. So um, we'll go back. We'll, we're in uh, our strength and conditioning part of the uh, phase right now where we're back in the gym. You know it's on. I live here. I'm coming yeah. all the time now. He going yeah. to have to learn to like me because I'm going to be up in there. Oh, no. It's yeah. a wrap. So back to that list, if you could pull it up, Trav. Um, who on this list do you think JoJo can beat? Um, let me see the list a little bit over here by you. Um, let me see. Hold up. Where I, I sent it to my man, Trav. Nope. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Obviously, you just being in there with him. JoJo looks to be at number seven on the Ring Magazine Top 10 Lightweight list. 
Um, Isaac Cruz is this new hot thing, huh? Everybody's talking about Isaac Cruz, and they want to get him in the ring with Ryan. Who who can JoJo beat on this list? Can he become like Tiafimo and Devin and, and beat two names on this list, in your opinion? I think I think uh, JoJo Diaz gives. Well, he already beat Javier Fortuna. That's right, one. Right. He he gives uh he gives uh everyone problems on this list. Mm. He gives everyone problems on this list. Um, I think as a style matchup, um, what would probably be a bad matchup would probably be is Javante Davis because uh, because JoJo, he likes to come forward, and that's what Tank needs. He needs you to come come forward. But uh, he gives Lomachenko, Tiafimo, Cambosos problems. Okay. He's, be- he's, better than, he's better than Kome. Mm. And is that based off what you just seen Vasil do to Kome? I wasn't yeah. expecting that. He he handled him. Man, listen. I told you then when we were talking about that when Lou didn't want that Devin was going to beat the shit out of Kome <laughs> if Kome had ever tried to. We know about him. And, uh, you know, he's slower than a New York uh, bus. <laughs> And there's a lot of stops on those buses in New York, for those that don't know. Slow as hell. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And and we said that this is not somebody that we're talking about after, right, after Mm -hmm. Vasil beat him. We talked about him before that, you know. Uh, Lou never gave us a call back. He never tried to negotiate the fight. And you talk about Lou now. Lou still still hasn't called called me. Really? about Cambosos. Not one time to talk about Cambosos. Not once. Do you think it's a money thing? I, I know, I think we had this conversation, and obviously Camboso's got his biggest payday on the zone, so you would assume that money isn't the problem. Uh, but do you think Lou believes he can get more money elsewhere? Um I I don't think I don't think so. Okay. I think that Lou Lou understands what Devin brings to the table. Right? And uh he does. He he never saw his fighters beaten, Devin. He never saw Kome beating him. He never saw um, Ken Bosos, right? He's he's always tried to go the opposite way, mm-hmm. right? And because what I'm saying is that is, then you negotiate, you reach out, you reach out to to our team, and you you see, right? Everyone says about the number, they don't know the number because we've never spoke the number. We've never had had a. We've never had to speak. The number with anyone outside of Eddie and the zone. And by number, you mean what you would take to right. go over there, right? So you know what I mean. If you if you don't know what the number is, then and you're not negotiating, then what does that say? It's funny that Lou wouldn't have called. You think that he's in communications with Eddie because um is in Australia the zone launching this year? I was I, pretty sure. I was under the impression they had an Australia the zone launch. No, I think one thing that Lou said was he said, "Why was Eddie speaking to the Australian government about a fight between Haney and uh, Cambosos? He felt that he should be the only one to speaking uh, about that." Does he have he, that connection? <laughs> well, well, the thing that 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 Eddie carefully pointed out that. He had permission from from Bill Haney and Devin Haney to speak as mm. far as making that fight happen. Yeah, man, I thought that was going to be a shoe win. Obviously, with the Australian launch of the Zone, or said to be, uh, they were said to be launching in in, in Australia. Mm-hmm. I thought it would have made uh, amazing sense. But what do you think of Isaac Isaac Cruz um, and all this newfound fame he's getting? He's he's obviously in the running here for a Ryan fight. I don't know that it'll happen. Uh, with everything I see Oscar saying and, and Sean Gibbons, but uh, yeah, your thoughts on Isaac Cruz's performance with Tank and just the newfound popularity, the fact that fight fans, they're drawn to him. Oh, I, I, Isaac Cruz, uh, he represents um, a particular style of fighting that that um, is that come forward, rugged, uh, you know, do or die you know, Mexican style of fighting that I love. I'm here on the West Coast. I, I see a lot, and I'm mm-hmm. sure you won't get a chance to see now a lot in the gyms um, that, that Devin has prepared for, I mean, since we started boxing. Um, we understand that. And that style of fighting presents a problem to everyone else around the world. 
for sure. So you were not surprised by the troubles he caused, Tank? No, no not at all. Not at all. But and like I said, like I said, we we actually grew up here. You know, well, Devin grew up and and has been fighting that style of fighter for a long time. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we know what kind of uh, what kind of uh, skills that uh, he brings to the table. There you go. Thank you, brother. So yeah. Um, do you think that the Ryan Garcia fight actually happens? You think uh, with so much back and forth in the media, Sean Gibbons coming out now saying that, you know, Oscar lying won't help the situation. So obviously Ryan has to be seeing that. Uh, do you think this can maybe turn into a fight or you think PBC DAZN is just not going to happen? Because that's how I originally looked at it. Like, you know, I, I was at the tank fight after your son's fight. We flew to L.A. and... In the post-fight press conference, Gibbons was clear. He's like, Al's happy with us. We lost, but he's happy. We don't need a WBA. Al Heyman is happy. And it's just like, if he's that happy, he'll give you something on the Al Heyman side of things is how I looked at it. What's your thoughts? Um, you know, Ryan, it's, it's crazy that Ryan now is starting to be the kind of fighter that people are questioning whether or not he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. I mean, him and Devin have fought numerous times in the amateurs. How many total at, fights? Um, five or six. Wow. Five or six times, right? And How many wins Devin has over him? Devin has three. Okay. <laughs> Devin has three. And so I think so Ryan, there's a possibility Ryan, it's Ryan five. Has two. He has two or three. Okay, you know so there's I mean? a possibility they're, t they're even then. It's a possibility. It's okay. a possibility. It's a possibility. And, and that's a shout-out to... To Ryan, the, the Garcia family, both his mom and dad, who did amazing job preparing this kid when he was young to face adversity, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, we would on our side, the Haney's, right? We're preparing for Garcia at the end because we know he's going to be at the end of the tournament. Just like I'm sure that they they would they they had grown accustomed to us being at the end. But that that backup quit. It never was in Ryan. I, I never saw it. I never saw it as You think an the money is what's causing him to be more tentative or reluctant? I Whereas don't know. when you guys were in the amateurs, there was no money. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know, but I would I would hope and pray that he gets back to uh get back to himself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um because it's good it's just good for not only uh boxing but his family, you know, and, and all the examples that of, of the young kids that are that are looking. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I kind of take it like the little boy to cry wolf at this point because it's like every time someone fights, he comes out and says, oh, I could have beat that guy better Yeah. in one way or another. Not yeah. that he literally says that, but he makes sure that you know that's what he meant. And it's just like we would like to see you fight some of these guys. Get in there. Like I wouldn't mind the Isaac Cruz fight. What about you? You think? Abs absolutely. At this point in time, you know, with Ryan, you want you anyone. Want to see, yeah, you would want to see Ryan in there with anyone right now, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's been out a full year, right? Is that and too that, much though, because of that full year? Um, that's that that is something that could play a factor. Just just as well as Lomachenko, he was out a year. Mm -hmm. He was out a year going into the Tiafimo Lopez fight. He was waiting and waiting and waiting. Where when you get a when you when you become a champion, you have six months to defend mm -hmm. if, if it's a vacant belt instead of uh, Lomachenko defending within six months against Devin Haney, who was the next highest ranked fighter in the WBC. He opted to take the franchise, then ended up taking a year off, getting a year off and, and uh, coming into the fight uh, with a year worth of uh, what they would call ring rust, I guess. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it definitely showed because his performance versus Kome was not the performance versus Tio. He mm. looked fresh in the Kome fight, without a doubt. Um, April, and you're saying you guys are now in the strength and conditioning phase. What's that mean for the people that don't know uh, what Devin is doing? Well, it just means we're, we're not going into boxing gym. We're doing, we're doing a lot of things to uh, – to keep his strength and, you know, to maintain um, from the previous fight. You know, you want to try to hold on to as much as that as you, you can, but not overexert or overtrain for a fight that you don't have yet. So we're in a we're in a very unique position right now, whereas most fighters don't go to the gym and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, last time I spoke to Devin, he made it clear. He was like, 
you know, people thought I couldn't make weight, uh, and I made it. Then the next fight, he said he found it easier to make weight mm. um, and that he grew an inch. Did, I guess, just the growing um, help out with that or was it he's getting more used to his body and knowing now what he needs to do on his own? Uh, what changed from possible struggle to now I got this? Well, he's he's becoming more of a constant professional. The more that... That, that he goes through the process. He's fought 27 times now. So he's 27 and 0. And um, it's not about necessarily the coaches standing over him. He's now starting to execute some of the things that we wanted him to learn, both, you know, at the, of course, at the dinner table, at the table, as well as, you know, uh, the recovery part of it, you know. Hmm. So I was talking about Devin's uh, <laughs> Corvette. What made him yeah. wrap it from red to beige? I don't know. I mean, that's just a color that uh, he's picked. Uh. That's his color. I don't. I've never seen any cars. Uh, I never seen color. one in beige either. So right, I get it. Right. I get so, it. It sticks yeah. out more. He just got the um, what the Maybach, the new what? Maybach, right? And it's black, black on black. But I was asking. I said, Are you gonna Are you gonna do the color thing to it too? And he says, I don't know what you think. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, how's that feel for you? Like, obviously, you've been there from the beginning and you've been in all the gyms. But as a dad, solely a dad, to sit back and watch your, your, your child be who he is, it's got to be a proud moment. And I just want to hear it from your words. I mean, because he's, a, he's, he's in control of his own destiny at this point. You've put him in a position that... He's got generational wealth and can attain that if he doesn't already have it. Um, and it, the sky looks like to be the limit, you know. Time is telling, like wine, how good Devin is. A few fights ago, people were questioning the power. You can't question power now when, you know, you're facing top 10 guys that can't hit you and are being affected by this quote-unquote non-power. So... I don't know. I just want to hear your words, man. As a dad, not really much a trainer or manager, promoter, none of, just as a dad to watch. Because for me, you know, I, I tell my wife all the time, like, at 21, I didn't know how to make $300 a day. My son is out there day trading. I'm super proud that he can make $300 a day trading on the market. Like, that wasn't my thing. So, that's a minuscule level compared to what Devin is doing. So you've got to be like, I don't know, it's got to be this warm feeling. I just want to hear how you feel. Well, I mean, happiness isn't tied to, to money at all, right? To see him, to see him happy and, and fulfilling his dream, mm -hmm. right? To also challenge yourself, right? And, and to see him go through the things that, that you go through when, you, when you're challenging yourself. When, you know, if he wasn't challenging himself and he was just settling, then I would, I would be extremely disappointed. So every day to see him go through the things that you have to go through to be a world champion in boxing and be the youngest world champion in boxing, alhamdulillah. Mm. Amen, man, amen. amen. Um, so when we started recording Devin, I think, what, he was 12 or 11 or is it 13? Yeah, it was he was one young, of those young, three, young. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When Super did young. you know he was going to be a professional fighter? Because obviously, you know, we got so many people that go through the amateurs and they don't turn pro. How did you know he would be a professional? And also, was there a moment where you knew he can be a world champion? Well, the the time the the one time that I really realized Devin was the you know he was the guy is when him and Floyd. Spart. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that was probably the time when I I know I really had the confidence that I knew that I was like this this guy is something different, right? Is because you grow up. I never I, heard I the story Floyd. of him sparring Floyd. Beat the shit out of Floyd. Oh. What are you <laughs> talking about <laughs> what? What? He beat Floyd up. What fight was that for? Before the Conor McGregor fight. Oh wow! Come on now, you know, and you you. Those are the times that you you hear about things, but then you don't hear about things because, you know, it's real, right? Why wouldn't Floyd try his best? Well, I guess it was too late by then. You guys were already with the zone by then, right? Um, for the McGregor fight? For the McGregor fight? No, I don't think so. I think Sheesh. we were still with – I think we were with Showtime. But um, 
for six rounds. They did six rounds, and for the whole the whole time, I was you know because I'm talking shit just like Floyd talk shit. And if mm-hmm. you ever saw, ever been to a doghouse sparring match, where yeah. Floyd is, Floyd talks shit to you. The mm-hmm. People talk shit. Everybody talks shit. So. You know, it was my opportunity, you know, to talk, talk shit some to shit. Floyd, to talk some <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> and I told him I was like, Floyd, it's like looking in the mirror, isn't it? And I'm like, you, I'm like, damn. You can't Floyd, get you can't off. Do nothing. You can't, damn, Floyd, you can't. Wow. And, and Devin, Devin says that when he got out the ring, he was like, that. it was like a, it was like a dream. Like it was euphoric in the sense that he knew everything that Floyd was going to do, right? <clears throat> and, um. I think Floyd, he came out and he said, uh, he said, yeah, you know, the time has passed where, you know, it's the young guys now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, he stays in shape, unlike the excuse that he said with Javante Davis when Devin put hands on Javante Davis mm. in front of him, right? Um, Floyd was in shape getting ready for him. It just came down to skills. And what I'm saying is skills, when you saw Devin, in there with the most skilled fighter that I had ever seen. And then Devin, skill for skill, not no, you know, where Floyd is trying to bully him or Devin is trying mm-hmm. to bully him, right? You were just seeing skill for skill and um, and there wasn't any comparison. That had to be surreal for, 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 for Devin. That probably put his confidence on a whole new level. <laughs> No, absolutely, no, absolutely, absolutely. For for us as a team as well, you know, for Devin and then us as a team. But shout out to Floyd for giving us the opportunity. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew what he was looking at when he when he when he uh when he said Devin, come on, when he when he told him, you know what I'm saying? He had been watching him since he was a kid, and he knew that Devin was at that at that point where Floyd was going to find out some things about himself, as well as Devin was going to find out some things about himself. Fortunately for us, it was it meant that Devin would move on, and you know, unfortunately for Floyd, he knew that it was at he was at the end of the road. Mm. Well, not only did we get the treat of the pop up, but definitely that story. I like I said, I had not heard that uh, Devin was in there, especially uh, this recent. That that had to be an amazing experience for him. Wow, I think that was after that was right after they took the picture, mm. the 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 picture where that they were sparring where they both had on the cup, you know. I think they, you know, had a warm embrace at the end of it. Um, you know, I think Floyd had something on his eye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So um, do you still think, or are you like me? Because I think it was me. Uh, do you think that the Tank-Haney fight is still the biggest fight to make? Or do you believe the belts are more important at this point? Um, I I I'm a big fan of Tank, right? I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of Baltimore, and and what Tank represents. Um, we share some of the same. We share some of the same fans. Also, we uh share some of the same loved ones that uh, care dearly about him, care dearly about Devin as well. Um, I think that that's the biggest fight for our culture. Mm-hmm. But the biggest fight legacy wise for Devin right now is George Cambosos and all the belts. All right. All right. That's definitely understandable. I want that tank fight though. And and, and being as though you said that Floyd already made an excuse for Tank when Devin and he sparred, does that also, I don't know, make you feel that reluctant that the fight won't happen because Floyd got to see firsthand what can happen? Um well, you know, Floyd has to do Floyd and uh, uh, Mayweather business. He has to do Mayweather promotions business. Um, our job was to to bring visibility to Devin and let the world see what his skill set uh, uh, brings. And then ultimately, it's the fans that that pay that do the that uh, pay for the the pay per views. It's the fans that pay for the subscriptions. Mm-hmm. So it's really, it really comes down to ultimately what the fans want and not what the promoters want, right? Um, Floyd did a great job with uh, Tank in the sense of, you know, he was on the, I think Tank was on the undercard of the Conor McGregor, was the first, Mm -hmm. was his first uh, national appearance in front of the world. Uh, Floyd has continued to do a great job of bringing visibility um, to to Tank, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it takes two, 
It takes two dance partners. Devin and, and our team has done everything that we can, that we could, could do. And I think we've did a great job at, at uh, becoming one of Tank's dance partners. It's, you know, solidifying to the people that there's no other fighter that they want to see Tank fight other than Devin Haney that will pose the, 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 the questions and answer the questions about Tank being the true superstar talent that he is. And uh, that's all that we could do. We could do our half, do our part, and I think that we've done it. You know, we've killed all the narratives that, that Devin wasn't, wasn't big enough, he doesn't sell enough, he doesn't bring enough to the table, right? It, we had to do that, and mm -hmm. I think we've done it. Now, how did it make you feel? I, I, I want to say, obviously, two weeks ago, Ellerby was out here kind of in the Devin Haney business, right? Talking mm -hmm. about how you guys might get paid too much to be in a fight with Tank because, I don't know, he made it seem as if there's no way to recoup the amount of money Devin Haney makes. Yeah, like I said, we've never had a talk with, with anyone other than DAZN and, uh, and Eddie Hearn. Um, you know, they don't pay for it, right? It's not Floyd Mayweather that pays for it. It's not Eddie that pays for it. It's the network, and the network is paid by the people. So, you know what I mean? I, I don't listen to those, to those narratives, right? If he, feels that, if he feels that he can make a fight, be a big fight, a pay-per-view fight with, a, with the Isaac Cruz instead of with Devin Haney, then I don't think he's, doing, he, he's not doing good business. Mm. Now, um, with Loma, he didn't look as great, obviously, in the T.O. fight, and you gave the reasons, and he gave his reasons, you know, with, with inactivity and things like that, but he did look good in the Comey fight. Is that still a fight that Devin is interested in? Um, obviously, it's not top priority because he doesn't have the belts, but... Is that something he's still interested in? Something that I guess he wants to put under, you know, on his on his resume, get that win. Because you you see guys like Shakur, they want to fight Loma. They be, you know some of these up and comers believe they can beat him and believe that name is valuable enough to be on their resume. How do you look at it? And and has your son told you he's still interested in that fight? Oh, Loma is not just a little little feather. And a cap. He's a, he's a big feather, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's something that we don't never overlook, you know, fighting him, right? Still, still right now, we don't put past uh, a fight with Lomachenko. Lomachenko was the one that didn't look for a fight with us. It was the, it was the opposite. And hypothetically, if top rank sends an offer, um, your priority would be Camboso first, right? Well, our, our, my my priority would be to entertain any of the offers and bring the offer bring the offer back to our team, and and hope that it's it's healthy enough that that we all can eat. Mm. All right, all right. I'm definitely interested in the Devin Haney business. I want to know what's next and where is next. Where, where would you like the fights to be? Obviously, if it's Cambosos, we know that the Australia is 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 a a market, but, uh, you know, I enjoyed the Linares fight. Um, I enjoyed the Jojo Diaz fight. That was new. I'm sorry I'm all over the... That was new. They booed the hell out of Devin. Were you expecting that? Um, they've been booing Devin since Mexico. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, definitely in Mexico I could see that yeah, happen. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that to happen in Vegas, though. No, um... No, it's good. It's good to be in the Devin Haney business. It's good to be... <laughs> it's good right now to be, you know... That's 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 part of it. That's part of it. We love to see the fans to, to come out and you know and and hope that their fighter or hope that their guy <laughs> beats Devin, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen you've seen that a lot with Floyd early on, right? The booze and all that stuff. That's just that's part of it. Yeah, I was shocked. I didn't think uh, you know because JoJo is from California. He got a little standing ovation, but it was it was. It was great to actually be there and witness the turning of that crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, they first were pro JoJo, and as the fight went on, it was more and more Devin until Devin took the win. So um, that's what we look to do to go to Australia, right? Mm -hmm. You look for those opportunities, and that's what I mean. Is in Mexico, it was it was the same thing, right? As you go in there and you they're cheering, and then they they somewhere during the fight they start to appreciate. 
yeah, the talent what and what, you, what they're seeing, right? Absolutely. And, and that's what we look to do is to go to Australia and put on that kind of performance. Yeah. And um, when Pacquiao fought Joe Horn, I think there was 55,000. And Cambosos has been saying some, some big numbers. Do you have a guesstimation on how many you think you would actually fight in front of in Australia? I, I don't know. I don't I, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I don't know those numbers, mm-hmm, right? I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't speak out of turn. Um, but does I know it make that, a difference? No, it doesn't. I I, I know this that the Australian people um, who've who has been uh, they've been waiting for something like this, <laughs> right? Since Jeff Horn, mm-hmm. right? Since Jeff Horn and Pacquiao. When is the last time there's been a championship fight there? Uh, championship, I don't know, but. You know, jo- Horn and uh, Zafara had a, a fight out there, and right. they're two known right. guys from well, Australia. What time do we deliver to people a great fight, a great championship fight uh, down under? And we look forward to the opportunity of uh, going and, and converting some of those those uh, fans, those Cambosos fans and the Devin Haney fans. Now, I know Gary Russell's back in action, I think, February. Is he? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he's moving up. All the talk of moving up, and I think he's defending his belt yet again. Let's take a look at who he's fighting. Who's uh, he fighting me, right now? Let me see. Let me see, Gary. Oh, he's fighting uh, the Philippine, right? Uh, Masiago? <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't think Masiago. He's has... big, though. I seen him with, with Porter. He's a big. Masiago? Yeah. Masiago yeah, he was sparring Porter for the Crawford fight. Has he fought anyone in, in the United States before? Yes. His last fight was versus Julio Ceja. And that w- he's got a few in America. His last three so far have been in America. This one is scheduled for America as well with Gary Russell. And uh, it looks like it's going to be the same weight, man. Gary's not moving up. He's defending that world uh, <laughs> WBC belt. Mm-hmm. But this is him, 23 and 0, 16 KOs. He's a big guy, though. Right. That that 5'6 doesn't do him any justice. Next to Porter, he's just as wide um, and just as uh, tall. Yeah, I don't think he's uh not on he that has level. Experience. Yeah, no, he's not no, he's not on that level. That's a that's a great way of putting it. Based on based on the fighters that he's that he's fought. When mm-hmm. I take a, when I take a quick look at it. But it's but in fairness though with Gary he's been away for for quite some time right so, I still want that fight so. Bill I you know once you guys fought Joseph I went back and watched the Gary fight Gary was impressive in that Jojo Diaz fight he was he was throwing with all his might and like some some big shots it's just it, it was impressive to see what he did versus what Devin did and. Uh, Again, factoring in that he's a supposedly this little guy, but he's not. He's he doesn't fight little. He doesn't fight little. I still think that's a good fight. I know public may not agree with me being as though Devin is a few divisions above him, but well, it it, it wasn't any slight towards Gary. It was the fact that Gary was saying that he was coming up to one thirty five, and, never and he has. also and he also then said that he would fight he would fight Crawford, Crawford at forty seven at forty seven. <laughs> For 1.5 million, right? So that's what what intrigued us is the fact that him being the the great fighter that he is, uh, longest reigning champion in boxing, right? Um, and and the fact that he wanted 1.5 to come up to fight Crawford, we said, well, you know, we'll give him 1.5. We ended up putting 1.5 and another 0.5 on the table, like at you know two million for him. And uh, two million. Yeah, it ended up getting it. It ended up the offer ended up being like two million at the end of it. And uh, you know, it's one point five when incentives. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something he should have took. Well, yeah. Is that something that could be revisited? Um, because JoJo got close to that mm-hmm. when he got in the Devin Haney business, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's no secret that that Devin Haney's opponents get paid, and rightfully so. We don't want it uh, going around that Devin is the only one that's buying uh, BMWs and Benzes and all those kind of things. We want 
the opponents. We want a fair playing field that the opponents are also eating as well. So I don't know. My other producer is saying, ask about Devin going to Australia and, 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 and how much time you would uh, – how early you would want him there. But I, I thought I asked you that already. Yeah, but, I, but you said that. You said about that. And, acclimation and, and stuff. They want to know that. We would have to be out there and, and shout out to Peter Kahn, who's, who's George Campbell's. You know Peter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who, um, who we discussed before about doing all, everything that, that on his side to make it comfortable when Devin comes over. Right. And, um, you know, so we, we plan on being there, being in Australia in enough time that acclimation won't be, won't be a problem, won't be an issue. But I'm, what I am curious on is, is Australia by being down under and I'm just asking, is it sea level or is it above? Is it like here the elevation? Good question it, for Trav, the producer. I'm on it. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it above sea level? Because that helps with the breathing. Right. Or makes it more difficult if it's above, right? right. If uh, it's 300 and oh, it's in meters. It's in 330 meters above sea level. So it ranges. They have peaks and troughs, but it's it's pretty just 330 meters. Whatever go. that means to you. It's pretty, it's pretty much so, sea so level. What is, so, oh, it's pretty much at sea level. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so not a problem? Not a problem. Not and a problem. explain that for us. Why wouldn't that be a problem because it's at sea level? Well, at sea level is when... You you get your your heart your heart beats less it beats comfortably at okay. sea level that's where you know most of and t- above is when you're in high altitude you're struggling which is yes which is better for training not for, for fighting tra- exactly exactly got it got it got it got it that's All why right. we're in Mount Charleston a lot um, that's why you know Shakur I heard it snows sea. out here yeah yeah crazy Shakur and 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 Crawford are always in Colorado mm-hmm. right you know we're always up here in Mount Charleston you know so. A lot of the the uh, the prepared fighters use elevation to their advantage, and then use sea level for recovery. All right, all right. Well, Bill, I do want to thank you, obviously, for coming. We have come to that time where the show is over. I want to thank everybody that tuned in. You see why you need to be tuned in? You just never know who's going to pop up in the new studio. I'm so happy to everybody that's tuned in, everybody that continues to support TBV. The grind doesn't stop. We got Bill Haney. Let them know where they can find you. It's BH. BH underscore underscore the great, right? BH uh, underscore the underscore great. But you can find me on your ass if you get out of pocket and talk (laughs) about Devin in the wrong way. But thank you, everybody, for having me. Thank you for this platform. Thank you. This is amazing. the the audio is is crazy. I know, like, I know. It's like you know, I don't want to even talk to you on my iPhone at home no more. You know what I mean? I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad. Right. I'm glad. But yeah, anytime, anytime, bro. We got to get Dev. Got to get Dev down here, man. And thank yes, you. Yes, yes. I would love to have him, but I I do want to just thank you again because you know you've always popped up, but popping up in the physical form. <laughs> oh, that was the cherry on top, man. We appreciate you so much because it's. That was fun. I can't. Yeah. I hope more people pop up. You surprised? I'm like, oh shit, yeah, that's yeah, you. Yeah, Even yeah. with the mask, I could tell. So, yeah. just thank you again, man, and uh, wishing you and your son the best, man. Thank Appreciate you. you. Salam alaikum to all my Muslims out there. You know what I mean. Allah Wakbar. God is great. All right, ladies and gents, catch us on the next one right back here, 6 a.m. Las Vegas time, rocking out. It is Nest GTO. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at Nest GTO. Peace. For the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.